Hello there my friends, how are you? This is Cindy Coots for Papercraft Crew and this is challenge 172. We had a two week break or two week long challenge because of the holiday. So I'm like um, a week behind because it should have gone up last week. I was going to do my um, December daily, ran out of time. I have a bunch of sticky notes on it now so I'll get to that next week. But right now let's go ahead and go through the Wonderland suite of products and we're going to be using our sketch. So I'm going to have this Wonderland stamp set, the Winter Wonderland Specialty Designer Series paper, then the vellum pack which is awesome. I'm going to have the snowflake elements for the inside of my card, Versatile Christmas. I have some clear embossing powder just with a little bit of sparkle mixed in because I mix mine. I mix my clear embossing powder, throw in a little bit of dazzling diamonds and I'm cool to go. You can use just clear embossing powder if you want. I have my frame framelits for my envelope which is going to be very vanilla and then I cut this cardstock here because we're going to be using that on the front of our card too. You're going to need your embossing Betty for our embossing. The Sleigh Ride Edgeless Die. I'm going to show you a fun way to use this. Then for our cardstock, you're going to need a piece of 2x4 the gold shimmer cardstock. We have an A2 size card base tent and that's when you get a piece of cardstock that's eight and a half by eleven, cut it down the middle by four and a quarter, turn it score at five and a half. On top of the card, I'm going to use this piece of cardstock cut by my favorite things is by their blueprints one. I'll have the measurements on my blog, but I use blueprints on all of my cards, that's just the way that it goes. They're not stamping up, but I love how the line cuts. It's it looks super professional. This panel here is blueprints too, as well as this vellum panel is blueprints too. And it's gonna fit right on top like this, just to kind of chill it out a little bit. But I like how it looks on the background with the vellum cardstock. If you flip this over you have white snowflakes. So that's really, it's very versatile. This is just my very vanilla panel for the inside and again this was cut from, let's see how close it is, Blueprints 1. So that is what we're going to get started off with. I also have some fine tip glue pen. We got to glue that vellum down somehow. Basic black Stampin' Up archival ink. That's new. I have my heat tool. This is from a couple years ago. It's the Versamark Dazzle Champagne which is more of a gold color. Champagne and the frost is more like snow. I have a bone folder, some gold cording, and my heat tool. And of course you'll need your Big Shot your scoreboard and I'm going to use my Misty. This is a fabulous tool. It's not something that Stamping Up does sell but it's perfect for mass production and if you need any Christmas cards please give me an email because I can send you about 50 of them. So I started making them this, I don't know, October and I have Christmas card burnout and here I am doing it again. We're also going to be using these snowflake element frames. It's going to be the larger one. And from our Wonderland stamp set, these awesome gorgeous trees. We're going to start out with a vellum panel first and we're not going to move the stamp on the Misty but we're going to move the paper. So this is what you need your embossing buddy for. I'm going to move this because I don't want it getting down on my Misty. So you just go over it like that. I already have my trees on here and this is where you just kind of monkey around a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and start getting our stamp inked up. 
have a brand new pad here, so it's going to just go down really quick. And again, be really careful with those magnets. They hurt. So I'm going to move my cardstock. Let's see. One thing I do like about these stamps here is that you don't have to slam a bunch of ink on them. Last one, close, press. This is how I wanted the whole panel to turn out, but I'm not going to sweat the small stuff right now because I honestly don't have time. What I need to do is get these magnets away from my computer and phone, to be honest with you. Get this out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and grab my clear slash sparkle embossing powder while that ink is still nice and wet. Just sprinkle it over. It looks messy now, but we're going to cover that bottom. And don't, you don't got to flick your paper off, okay? Just use your magic powder bag or embossing tool or something and give it a light tap just to get the excess off. And if there's any where you don't want it, you can use a paintbrush on because if you're flicking it like that all the time, guess what? Your embossing powder falls off. And you don't want it to fall off. You want it on there. And if you get too aggressive with a brush, it's easy enough to go ahead and put the powder back on. However, again, we have to move fast. The thing about choosing patterned vellum paper is that you can hide your adhesive behind your image that's embossed a lot of times. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this archival ink out. Let that dry. One thing that I've been doing lately is I have like a bowl here and I just get one of my dad's three million washcloths. He did have five and I got rid of three. And wipe my hands off like that and your desk and then just go and rinse it out a few times a day and put some warm water on it and I guess since moving to Chico, I've become like a little bit, a lot of an environmentalist. Saves on baby wipes, coffee filters, all that stuff. Plus it's free. So let's go ahead and get the inside of our card done. I'm going to go ahead and grab my Misty back in. And I do want to use these trees again, however, I want to use a different color ink and I want to use the black on for my sentiment. So with this right here, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the corner to make it easier for me. I'm going to turn over my tree and put it right down there at the very bottom and grab a sentiment from Versatile Christmas. Now remember how high that is so when you pick your sentiment you've got to be very careful as far as what you want to grab because you do you want to keep your balance. Now remember I'm not going to put anything on the outside. So it's all going to be on the inside. Now the good thing about the Misty is even when you put your stamp down, this is the position where I'm going to want my Merry Christmas. So 
I'm going to stick it right up there. And I'm just going to close it. And then open it back up. And when I look here on my grid lines, I can see if the sentiment is going to be straight or not. Not by the shape of the stamp because it's wonky, it's not straight. But I'm looking at this line right here and it goes right through the middle of the sentiment on both sides. So that's how I know it's safe. And this is where, where we're going to do some really super quick double embossing. So I'm just cracking open that gold powder there. Now remember, our trees are going to be in gold and our sentiment is going to be in black. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the sentiment inked up. Grab this first mark dazzle and add it to our trees. Throw on some last minute embossing powder. This just wipes up with a baby wipe, the black on the misty. And again, super quick embossing. I'm going to press down on the sentiment first and then just let it sit there and let that ink absorb. And if I don't close up my ink pads, my it'll be a disaster. I'm going to give this a really good press. The only thing I don't like about these clear mount stamps is that a lot of times your ink does get on the outside and then when you put, put embossing powder on it, the embossing powder is there but again you can wipe it off with a brush. I'm just trying to keep that, ooh, I guess I didn't clean my stamp all the way but you know what? I am all right with it. Again, that goes on the floor. This is going to get gold. I'm sorry. My little hybrid brush off the excess underneath. Okay, once again, I've put a lot of strong adhesive on the back of this panel. to line it up. You know what? This is four by five and a quarter. That's one thing I do remember when I was cutting it because I measured it in order to get this piece here. Yeah, this is a two by four, four by two, whatever. So what we want to do is get this up to here we have a nice sparkle glittery card. I'm not sure how I feel about the bare being so, the top being so bare, but we'll figure it out. But what I really wanted to show you was how to use the Sleigh Ride Etched Style to create a snowbank. If you take a look at all of them, they're in various positions. And remember, this is only four inches, okay? So I can't really use this one without a house showing up on it. I can't really use this one without a sleigh showing up on it. However, I can use this one with the trees with four inches with nothing showing up on it to make my snow bank. So the easiest thing to do for that is just to go ahead and get it positioned. And I'm going to go towards the top as much as, and there's only two. You can either go this way, where your slope is down, or you can flip it over like that. And I like this position much better. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some very low tack tape on it to keep it like that. because this is the only one out of it, out of that set of die cuts that will be able to give you this snowbank. I'm going to go ahead and bring up my Big Shot. 
I need to zoom out so you can see. I have my magnetic platform and one plate. And if you saw my video the other day or my thing about my messy craft room, you know what I'm working in. So I got my magnetic platform and one clear plate on top of it. And then I'm going to put another clear plate on top and then crank it through. The reason why I put it towards the top as much as I could is because it's easier to cut down the paper if it's too high than it is to go ahead and grab another piece of paper. And I don't know why I'm cranking this through so many times when I don't have to. So I'm going to go ahead and set that big shot aside and give you a look at what that die created, the kind of snowbank that we have. I think it's kind of cool because there's so many companies out there now with um, snowbank dies and Stampin' Up! didn't have any. So I just kind of saw this, grabbed it, winged it, and took a look at it. You could probably get away with four, no, nah, I think four inches is going to be the most, but at least it's something. But don't forget, you can always hand them cut out your own snowbank too. It's not a big deal. So the snowbank is not going to go all the way on the black, okay? It's just going to be on the trees. So I'm going to move it down and that looks just about right. Another idea too is to go ahead and flip it over and get your placement and shift it ever oh so slightly. Grab yourself a pencil that I thought I had on my desk, which I don't, so it has to go in my mouth. Look at the bottom right there, because I'm talking with a pen in my mouth. Look at the bottom right there, and then just go ahead and make a mark as to where you want to cut it. The fun part about this is getting it cut. So what you want to do is... I know the Stampin' Up! trimmers are a little bit hard to tell. They don't always line up where you want them to. So I just look in this hole right there, okay? And these little stopper thingies up there always help. And then I'm going to line up right in the middle of that hole. And I use kind of this corner as a place to hold down my... There you go. Now I'm a little bit above, but that's okay. Now the back of this cardstock has, it holds better if you use glue dots, but if you use a glue gun, and I've even found this adhesive to hold it down very well, you're going to be okay. So what I'm going to do in the meantime is go ahead and just get everything adhered, not adhered, but you know, put tape on the back of everything that I need to. You've seen me do this a million times. I don't think you want to see it anymore. And this is how I do it. Pretty primitive, pretty lazy. When I pull this off, I got a little bit of overhang. Just fold it over and you're fine. Since I did that, might as well pull this back in. Pull the tape off. You can barely see my overhang. I'm just going to fold it over. It's not going to cause you any bulk either. And then get this lined up with the bottom, how we cut it. On all sides. Here we go. That is what our panel is going to look like. 
Let's so doll it up on the bottom down here. We're going to go ahead and grab a snowflake. I'm not sure which size yet. But my first inclination is to go towards... That right there, perfect. And I'm going to leave it alone. You can throw some embossing powder on top of that if you want, but I'm just going to leave it in its natural wood element. I'm going to grab my cording here. And leave myself up about that much. It's a good eight inches, and there's a reason why. Okay. That's not going to count. That's going to be the middle, okay? So I'm going to go around once. I'm going to go around twice. And I have this here. Drag it towards the middle. Kind of bunch it a little bit, pull it up, and get something equal on the other side. Now, of course, I need just a tad of a glue dot to put down. That actually is like right in the middle, exactly where I want it. There is a right and a wrong side of this, you can tell. This is completely flat on the back, and this is a little bit more raised. While you're fiddling with this, make sure it's exactly where you want it on the other side. And either you can grab some strong adhesive, or just a piece of scotch tape to keep it down. I'm just going to grab adhesive. Because it was right there. Now, before we do that, we're going to flip this back over. Okay. And I just may take that line of adhesive all the way down. Which I'm going to because it's not going to hurt for what we need to do. Okay, now I have this black foam tape by adhesive by Ranger, and I'm really getting into like if my car is white, I have to have white foam tape, and if it's black, I have to have black foam tape because it's really super obvious. So it's just like, and I've used this maybe I don't know once or twice. The rolls aren't super big, which is a bummer, but that is what Amazon is for. It's to find stuff like this. I'm going to go ahead and just put that right over. And with cutting the edges of this, you really don't want to go over. Again, I'm going to peel the adhesive off the back here. And then we're going to adhere. It's black on black. And boy, am I having a bear of a time. Okay. Let's get her done. Beautiful. There we go. Now, notice how there's only one hole in this snowflake. Grab your snowflake. Just 
took one up one side, the other one up. Fit. I want to get it evened up on both sides, okay? And then just manipulate and pull as you need to and move that snowflake to where you want it to. In this case, I want mine right in the middle of the card, at the bottom, and I want that point sticking up. I'm going to go ahead and try this, and just put a heavy block on top and let it sit for a while and set itself. Okay, I have my snowflake down, not like how I would like it to be, but it's pretty well secured. I don't know why I cut that off. It's a mess. Okay, this is the fun part. I'm going to tie this. Yeah, snowflake not down. I need these tails. Tie it into a double knot, really, really close, you're going to be okay. And remember, you can always sneak a glue dot or two underneath there. There's a reason why we're double knotting this. And to keep my snowflakes straight, I am going to sneak a glue dot underneath there. I had tried the Stampin' Up glue. I just showed it to you. This, no look. Then I squirted some multi matte medium underneath there and let that block sit on top. Oh gosh, for a good. I don't know, 10 minutes, and then the second I picked it up, it all came up, so it's the glitter paper, and glue dots have a tendency to do really well with glimmer paper, as far as keeping any kind of elements down. Let's see, there we go. This little guy right here, remember we were having problems with him because he was like a little bit broke. I'm going to find a smaller glue dot and sneak it right on underneath there, just so he doesn't break off. Little teeny tiny, three sixteenths of an inch. And, and I'm going to put him right there. So that is how you save a card. There's tons of ways of doing it. You've all been through it before. Okay, so remember that double knot that I had? I found a couple jingle bells from a few years back. So what I'm going to do is grab the end of one and thread it on through. little cord piece. Let's hope she goes. I think she'll go. Yeah, it just takes a little bit of manipulation. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the other jingle bell. I'm going to zoom in now. Now I've 
both Jingle Bells tied. Isn't it cute? Now remember, underneath here you can't see the double knots. However, I do need a single one to keep them together. It's not going to kill you to do another one either, so I might as well. Because again, you're not going to see it. That's too stinking cute. You pick it up, and you can still hear the jingles. So now I'm just going to tie it into a bow. And you know I have to do that upside down. lines up for me because that's just how it works. Love the cording, not the easiest thing in the world to work with. I love how it, how it rolls around the spool like that and then you get it on your card too. So it would have been great if my Jingle Bells had gone this way, the same with my bow, but it didn't. See? Isn't it pretty? And there we go. That is our card for paying no, 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 no. Remember how I wasn't feeling good about this up here because it was just so blank? I went ahead and put five gold sequins on the back of my glue dot roll. And I'm just going to put them down. little scattering of them here and there. Plus I have a little space up here where I couldn't put any adhesive and this will cover quite nicely. And I am using the rule of thirds here. That's like two perfect and two matchy matchy. Okay, I'm feeling that. Sorry for the delay there. Here's our card. I think it's pretty cool. Very cute. Lots of shine. Lots of bling. Lots of class. Lots of dimension. Then you open it up and there you go. You have that beautiful texture on the inside. And then we also have this fabulous coordinating envelope that goes with it as well. And it matches perfectly. So I hope that you enjoyed this really super late midweek inspiration from the Paper Craft Crew. And I will see you again next week. So if you don't have, be sure to check Tuesday's specials coming out. Lots of stuff going on sale because the um, holiday catalog is coming to an end. And the products that I'll be using for my December Daily come from that. And it's going to be specifically from the December Daily. So if you need some of those and want to work along with me, and you haven't done one before, let's just go for this and have some fun. And go ahead and pick up your products now. And everybody, the Papercraft crew, thanks you for joining us today. God bless you, and have a great day. Bye.